continue in the spirit of the Most High by showing myself Kelvin Shy. Looking more into humility and solutions. With it come solutions as we've been going over this lesson of what pleases the Most High. And as we can see, well, you know, I, I imagine um, it's probably this topic probably is a topic that's boring to a lot of you because it's not exciting. But spiritually, it's the best thing that you could hear in understanding what pleases the Most High. That's why our people are not spiritual, spiritually endowed. A lot of you just going through formalities, whereas you like. Uh, things that pertain to you or not to you, mainly Israel, but controversy things, con con controversial. You like to run the fights. You like to run to things that are not edifying as much as you need to be able to know what pleases the most high. From a lot of you that probably will go to a few of these lessons, you say, oh, I got it, you'll leave it alone, but then in the spirit that the Most High has taken the time to bring to His holy name what works. A lot of you going to miss it. That's why you can think of however you want to think and put yourself there if you want to. But the last I seen, the Most High said this. <laughs> and this should wake you up if you sleep. If not, then hey, Get ready for the lake of fire. Enjoy yourself now because a lot of you, that's where you're going. If you don't really look at what pleases the most high. Look. Mark this. Jeremiah 3.14. Turn, O backsliding children, say it the most high. For I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city. He would have said, I will take you. This is what the Most High said he's going to do. I will take you one of a city and two, one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. You hear that? That's one of a city and two of a family. He said, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, to his mind, his word, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. See? That's what he said. You see, you're looking for the easy way. Y'all like, like the things of the world. Things that are, and I'm not talking to those that are adhering to what it takes to please the Most High, I'm talking to you that are rebellious and don't have the time and don't really have it in your spirit to try and be one of those of a city or one of the two of a family that you say you're going to bring to Zion. Spiritually is the only way that we're going to make it to Zion. The flesh problem is nothing. The spirit is everything. That's what we got to look at. Spiritually, got to be spiritually endowed where the spirit is against the flesh. So you defeat the flesh with the spirit. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So you make the flesh strong. By being more spiritually endowed, so you can understand what it takes to please the most high. But a lot of you want to please man. You're looking at or please yourself first and foremost. Oh, this is all about yourself first. Let me get that right. Please yourself. Then you look at man. That's why the most high said, hey, ain't nobody really afraid of me. They ain't really looking at me. To know what I'm getting ready to do to this earth and see what I'm doing until it comes your way. Then everybody can feel 
the most high. When it comes and hits you, then you feel it. Then you can become humble as can be. Then once a little time go by, you go back to where you was at. Just going through formalities. You got to hear this. This is for your salvation, people. Everybody should take heed. Everybody should take heed to what pleases the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because he's going to visit you. And when he visits you, then you're going to find out what it is to be humble before the Most High. I don't care how bad you think you are or how much you think the Most High can't touch you. Oh, yeah, he's going to really get y'all. Are you arrogant suckers? You, he hates you. So you hate a poor man that's proud. He not with you. You rolling with Satan and don't even realize it. Wake up, Israel. These are solutions from the most highest word that works. Look at uh, John the Baptist. You see his mother said, hey, I'm, wow, I'm not worthy to the, 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 the one the son of the most high going to come through to be in front of me? Wow. And this is John the Baptist. John the third chapter. No, Matthew the third chapter. So like you. And look at verse 13. Then cometh from Mashiach Elbashai from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him. This humility of John. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee. And cometh thou to me? John the Baptist said, hey, you're supposed to baptize me. I'm not worthy to baptize you. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and come thou to me. And Mashiach answered, Ring said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for this, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Mashiach was baptized. Same thing in Luke 3 and 16. John answering, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner. But the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. Many of uh, many other things he in his exhortation preached he unto the people. See? You know what my shepherd y'all say, he's telling you right here. Say, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, or the wheat into the barn. But the shaft, the part of the wheat that's good for nothing, he will burn with fire unquenchable. All those, like, like the most I said in 2 Ezra 9, 22, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. That's the, that's the, the shaft. Will he burn with fire unquenchable? He ain't going to be able to put it out. Let you know. How you say that that's love right there? Hmm. When he say he's going to burn them up, he's going to put his weed in his barn? And the shaft into unquenchable fire because they were made to perish. 
He got to let the multitude know. He got a multitude of people that's born to perish, he said. You see, you looking at it, everybody got an opportunity. You know, everybody don't have an opportunity. Some people were born in vain. Look. Look, look, at, look at the tears. A lot of you, you, uh, you don't really understand the tears. The tears are, just like we just read about, uh, interracial marriages, where those are the so-called white men predominantly coming in and marrying or laying with our women and having these babies that's out here that look just like the children of Israel, but they are his children. That's why Amash Akrasai talks about this in uh, Matthew, the 13th chapter, and 24. Another parable put here, I'm just here because he said about the wheat in the garden, the wheat in the barn, and the shaft will be burned with unquenchable fire. So let's look at this, just an example. In Matthew 13, 24, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. So he done brought forth the children of Israel. That's the good seed that came forth in the world. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Just like he said, he go, let me say he's going to take the wheat, you put it into his garner, which is a barn. You take the shaft, it's going to be burned up with unquenchable fire. Listen. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Then appeared these tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, does not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence come, then cometh half the tares. Where are these tares coming from? Remember the enemy at night slept with the good tares, with the, excuse me, with the good wheat, selected with the good wheat, and brought forth tares. Slept with our women, the children of Israel, and bought forth what Hamashiach Roshai is calling tares. He could just come out and just give you the understanding of what he's really talking about. That's why you have to deal with deep understanding in the spirit to understand what he's saying. Verse 28. He said unto them, an enemy have done this. He could have said, hey, go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68 so you understand what I'm talking about. An enemy has done this, right? So just in case, Deuteronomy 28 68. And the Most High shall bring thee into Egypt, which means captivity, slavery, and bondage. When you read Exodus the 20th chapter, the second verse, again, another time, with ships, proving that we are the children of Israel. Because we came over here on them ships, and they came over here in 1492 and put us on ships and sailed us all the way over to Europe, and from Europe to Africa, from Africa to America, and so forth. And the Most High shall bring into Egypt, again, looking for this enemy, with ships, by the way where I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. We will see our land as a nation of Israel again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies, see? Your enemies. For bond men, slave men, and bond women, slave women. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no man shall save or redeem us. So now, going back to Matthew 13. Now that you know that, and most of you didn't know. But if you did know, then you can understand we were sold on auction blocks to our enemies. As it says right there. For bond men, slave men, and slave women. Because we broke the laws of the Most High. So now, going back to Matthew 13, and that's, remember that's all they had was the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets. So here we are in Matthew 13, looking at the wheat and the tares. So it says, remember, he said in verse 25, but while men slept, 
his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Lay with our women and left. You know. But when the blaze was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Here come the so-called white man's children, that enemy, and all the rest of the enemies of these nations that's laying with our women. Remember the Most High said he separated all the nations. That's what Amashach is going to do when he come back. You see? He's going to separate all the nations. He ain't integrate no one. He severed us from all nations as the 12 tribes of Israel. And he gave them their land as he gave us our land. So they could multiply and be a nation. He gave every nation their woman, every man their woman, to be a nation. So here he come. The enemy comes in and lays with our women. They bring forth what they call tares. Verse 27. So the servants of that householder came and said unto him, This is the truth. Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Did you have the true lineage of Israelites coming from you? So he says, From whence then has it tares? And what's, how come it have these tares? Which are the enemy's children. That's among us, that look like us, favor us and all that, but they're not us. He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? So you want us to go and gather them up? This is showing you that this verse is going to show you that no, you can't do it because some of them look just like the original ethnic and biblical Israelites. The bloodline of the true Israelites. This is what it says. He said to them, excuse me, but he said, nay, verse 29, no, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Now you know that when you think that's a tear, it could be a wheat. You think it's a weed, you think it is the enemy's seed when it's actually Israel that you rooting up. You'll get some of the Israelites. That's what he, that's what he says. It's the orders. He said, let both grow together until the harvest. That's when the Mashiach was trying to come back to judge and make war. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, who are the angels, gather ye together first the tares. <coughs> Gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. Remember he said? You're going to gather his wheat in his garner, garner in his barn. And he burn the shaft, which is the wheat, the part of the wheat that's no good, and to unquenchable fire. Listen to what he said. Gather you together first the tares. So we're going to tell the reapers who are the angels. And bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn, which is what he just what we just read about. See, verse thirty six. So you see that uh, you might say, "Oh, you're just saying that." No, my shackle shackle get understanding. Then the Mashiach of Shai sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. They want to know about these, this parable that I just went over. And he, and he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Twelve tribes of Israel. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Remember 9, Job 9, 24, said the earth was given to the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not, where and who is he? So we know who's ruling the world. Or the wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. So a man came 